Okay, so introduction to acid base status requires measurement of bicarb and H, uh, BH, BCO2, and plasma bicarbonate through the calculated value of Henderson Hassel bulk equation that we have, we are all familiar with from the physiology 101. BH is 6.1 plus the logarithm uh, power 10 to the bicarb divided on 0.03 BCO2. This is the common, uh, the, uh, the, master, the master equation about, and the most important equation, chemical equation in the buffering system where the H2O2 plus CO2 give you H2CO3 and eventually they will give you bicarb and H plus and this, both of these equations controlled by the carbonic anhydrase enzyme. So the carbonic anhydrase enzyme converts in both sides depending on the medium of the tissue. If there is an acidosis, the part of the equation with more bicarb will be produced. If there is less alkalosis, less than, that will be the uh, bicarbonic acid which is H2CO3 will be converted in H2O and CO2. Next, please. So how we do, uh, uh, we measure the pH is through doing the ABGs. The ABGs are arterial blood gases. You can see the syringe, pre-filled syringes, uh, vacuum-filled syringes, and sometimes we use insulin syringes. It depends. And it's in the radial artery. Next, please. We pulse. Before that, sometimes we perform something called Allen's test. We compress both the ulnar and the radial pulse, and we see uh, 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 the pale should be pale within six seconds. Uh, uh, sorry, pressure from the ulnar artery, and the color should return within six months to the to the red. If uh, then six seconds to the red, if did not return to the six within six seconds to the red, that means we have deceased uh, to both disease artery. Why this is important? Because when we do ABGs, we might develop aneurysm at the at the artery, and if the patient does not have collateral circulation, they might have ischemia. Next, and that's what I was talking about. Okay, next. So normal uh, gas values is uh, BH is between 7.35, or as we know, is 7.45. In the venous, if it's a venous gas, if it's a venous gas, the BH will be lower by 0.05. So it will be 7.3, 7.4, CO2, 35, 45, ideally 40, the calculated one, and in the venous, 42, 48. Uh, uh, bicarb arterial 20 to 28, which would be 24 plus minus 2, and in CO2 it will be 40 plus minus 5. BO2 it will be between 80 and 100 uh, millimeter mercury, and the venous will be 35 to 40 millimeter mercury, and the autosat in the venous often around 70s. Okay. Venous blood gas, as we mentioned, is usually is uh, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, or 0 0.05. I would say units lower than arterial venous. BCO2 is 7 to, uh, to 8 millimeter mercury higher than the arterial calculated uh, bicarb. So uh, the, the bicarb that uh, we see in the result of the ABG is always calculated through equations, okay? It's not measured, so it's different. So it's always calculated. Uh, so the machine will calculate it for you. And the venous is 2 milli equivalent higher than the arterial. Arterial and venous gases will not be equivalent during the arrest. It's, this is an obvious, will be very low, the venous. Next. Acidosis is the presence of process which tends to lower the pH by virtue of gain H plus uh, or loss of bicarb. So it either retain of acid or, it, uh, or loss of base. The uh, is here. Acidemia is pH less than 7.4 or 0.35. Alkalosis is the presence of process that tends to raise the pH by virtue of loss of H pluses a loss of acid and retention of base, which is more than 7.4, alka 7.4, next. We have, as we know, the buffering system is the respiratory and the kidney. So the, 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 the respiratory system is the quicker buffering system. It can compensate acidosis and alkalosis quickly. However, the kidneys, it takes six to 12 hours to compensate. The respiratory process, which leads to acidosis and alkalosis through primary alternation in the ventilation will result in excessive elimination or retention of CO2, and that's how we have acidosis and alkalosis. Metabolic is the same in the kidneys through disruption for the excretion, retention of the base or uh, excretion of the acid or vice versa. Simple acid-based disorder is a single process of acidosis and alkalosis, which is compensated. 
mixed when we have two two disorders, more than one base disorder at the same time. Next. One hand cannot clap, respiratory and metabolic, as we mentioned, the next, the buffering system. So on. Oh, yes, thank you. So, uh, acid base balance pH is maintained with a narrow range uh, to preserve the cell function and the enzymes, many enzymes and our enzymes to, to maintain the function of them to keep us alive. وين مسؤول القاعات؟ أغلب كله تسأل مسؤول القاعات بس مشكلة أنت أمور ماشية تشيله وحطيته أوكي hopefully it works now uh, why BH is, is quite important to maintain the cell function and the enzyme working probably because either alkalosis or acidosis is not uh, optimal for the enzymes to work and often they degenerate and they stop the enzymes from working that will keep us alive. So the buffering system minimizes the change in the BH. It will keep the cyst our BH between 7.3 and 7.45. غلبكوا إذا في حد يسأل مناوب القاعات احكي له بس يظل يفصل هذا الشيء. بدك تحط تحتيه شيء يعني؟ شو تحط تحتيه هذا الشيء؟ Okay, next please. pH is maintained, as we said, in narrow, yeah, through the primary buffering system is by carb. Uh, next. Compensation is in a normal process. Jama'a. شو رايك تيجي لقدام عندي؟ اللي ورا كلكم تعالوا لقدام. آخر ثلاث صفوف تعالوا لقدام من هون. كم هي؟ أحب أشوفكم يعني يكون قريبين مني. آخر ثلاث صفوف تعالوا لقدام. Okay. Compensation the normal response of the respiratory system or kidneys to change the pH induced by primary acid disorder. No overcompensation, yani. If you alkalosis, the response, for example, for respiratory alkalosis is metabolic. And uh, respiratory alkalosis may mean you ventilate and you clear many CO2. So the response will be reducing of the bicarb. And it should not be overcompensated or overshooting, okay? Shouldn't be overshooting. Kidneys are slow, lungs are fast. Lack of compensation determines other primary disorder. The degree of appropriate compensation is predictable. There is an equation. So we'll see in a bit. Okay, next. pH 7 point, the range 7.3545, 3540, 40 is the value, reference value. Uh, 24, the bicarb, the reference value plus minus 2. Next. A prediction of compensatory response in metabolic acidosis. So the response in the metabolic acidosis is when the bicarb is low, the response will be the lungs will, will what the lungs will do, the lungs should clear the CO2, okay? So the compensation will be BCO2 is 1.5 of uh, multiplied by the bicarb. Or, yeah, uh, the BCO2 will increase 
كان جست كلوز ذا دور بليز حدا منكم بس يسكر الباب شكرا متابلك الكلوسس بي سي او 2 انكريز باي 0.75 ملم مركوري فور 1 ملي مول انكريز ان باي كارب سو ايتش باي كارب انكريز 0.75 ملي مول ملم مركوري اوف باي سي او 2 انكريز اند ذس از ذا كويجن سو ان متابلك الكلوسس ذا بي سي او 2 ذا بريدكشن ويل بي 0.7 ملتيبلايد باي ذا بي سي او 2 بلس 20 بلس ماينس 1.5 اند ويل هاف اكزامبلز نيكست ان ذا نيكست كابل اوف لايز جست ويت Respiratory acidosis is acute, so we'll in each increase in BCO2, 10, if there is an increase in 10 in BCO2, one bicarb will be increased in the acute, so, and the BH will be reduced by 0.08 and for each 10. Chronic respiratory acidosis, bicarb will increase, and in, here is four, but I used, we used to learn is three, it's the same, it's either four or three, so, any increase in the BCO2 10 in the chronic, the BCO2, which means more than 12 hours, the bicarb will be increased by three or four. And respiratory alkalosis is acute when the CO2 drops, the bicarb will decrease by two millimole for each 10 millimeter mercury drop in the CO2, and the chronic, which will be around four, four to five, each drop in the BCO2 will drop four to five and uh, millimeter, uh, millimeter, uh, milliequivalent of bicarb. Role of the kidney is to retain and regenerate bicarb by regenerating the buffer with the net effect of eliminating the acid, acid plus secretion and bicarb retention or reabsorption. Role of the respiratory system is to eliminate the CO2 next. Characteristic, as we mentioned, metabolic acidosis, the primary BH will be low. So the primary culprit or the primary problem will be the bicarb will be low and the compensation will be the CO2 is the low. And the metabolic alkalosis is the opposite. The BH will be more than 7.4. The bicarb will be increased, and as a response, the CO2 will be increased. And the respiratory BH is low. The CO2 will be increased first, then the bicarb will be uh, increased as a compensation, and should the compensation should be predicted to say it's a simple acid disorder, otherwise it will be mixed. And, uh, and the same for the respiratory alkalosis increase in BH due to decline in CO2 and will result in decline in bicarb next. That's almost the same. How would you, how would you analyze that? Uh, if the BH is acidic and the BCO2 is acidotic, means the CO2 is high, then you look at the bicarb. If it's alkalotic, this is a normal response. So which, what does that mean? That bicarb increased? with increase of the CO2 and the acidosis, the respiratory acidosis. So BCO2, BH is acidotic. BCO2 is high, more than 45 or 50. It's, let's say 60 for easiness. And, there, and the bicarb is low. It's not 30, for example, it's 20 or 15. This is combined respiratory, combined respiratory and metabolic acidosis. The same applies for the alkalosis, okay? Next. Stepwise approach, determine the primary disorder first, what we have, which acidosis, is it respiratory or metabolic? Then we can see if it's compensated or not, okay? Calculate the, uh, cal check the compensatory response. There is a uh, equation that we show, as we show, how we predict the CO2 and the bicarb. Uh, calculate the anion gap, uh, calculate the corrected bicarb concentration if the anion gap is increased, okay? Examine the patient to determine whether the clinical signs are compatible with acid-base uh, analysis thus obtained. Next. Oh, again. Again. Okay. Compensatory response. So metabolic acidosis, for example, BCO2 is 1.5 multiplied by the bicarb plus 8 plus minus 2, the whole result. So if the bicarb is 12, then the BCO2 will be 26 plus minus two. If the bicarb is seven, then the BACO2 will be 18.5. So metabolic acidosis seven and 12, you can imagine. If the numbers, the predicted, for example, that if you, if you found that the BCO2 is 30 or 40, this means that it's not just metabolic acidosis, it's as well respiratory acidosis. So this is the predicted, okay? The numbers on the right, this is the predicted. Anything above overshooting means there is a mixed 
as the numbers are the same within the same range, expected range, this is a simple compensated meta uh, metabolic acidosis or acid balance disorder. The same for alkalosis, bicarb, from which this comes. So bicarb is 35, BCO2 is 11. 11 is, we mentioned that 24 is the reference value. So the, thir the difference between the, the reference value, 35 minus 24 equals 11, okay? Okay, equals 11 multiplied by 0 0.75, then 8.25, add it to the 40, to the reference, it will be 48. Anything above that, that means, what does that mean, or below that? It's not just metabolic alkalosis, it will be respiratory alkalosis, or if it's above that, the CO2, this means there is a respiratory acidosis plus metabolic alkalosis, okay? Next. Acute respiratory acidosis, we mention each 10 increase in CO2, one, one bicarbonate increase because there is no time for the kidney to buffer. But more, with time, more than 6 to 12 hours, it will give you 3. Okay. Uh, BCO2, 55. BCO2, 55. Uh, bicarb expected is 55 minus 40. Divided in five. And if I give them 15 on 10, one and a half, you add it and you expect that the bicarb should be within 25.526. But if the bicarb is 30 or 32, what does that mean? It's a respiratory acidosis plus metabolic alkalosis. So it's a combined again. So this is the prediction. Next. Chronic, we mentioned more time given to the kidney so it will compensate now. Okay. When it compensates, so we'll increase by four or three, let's say four here. So uh, 55 minus 40 is again, four uh, multiplied by 1.5 uh, by four, six added to the 24 is 30. So in the chronic respiratory acidosis, we, we expect the bicarb is, is 30. If the bicarb is 20, 18, that means we got a, a respiratory acidosis plus metabolic acidosis as well. Next. Same, BCO2, not BCO3, yeah. Okay, it's typo, next. Spiratory alkalosis, uh, bicarb will decrease by two per uh, 10, or by three per 10 and five. I would say three and five, not two and four. Uh, the slides should be changed, to be honest, I'm sorry. But uh, should be bicarb will decrease by two, uh, by three for each 10 and by, uh, in the acute and the chronic four by five for each 10 millimeter mercury in the BCO2 drop. Next. Okay. Anion gap is the determinant of unmeasured anion gap acid. Most of the chemicals add extra, let's say, most of the chemicals add extra H plus to the serum. Normal anion gap is 10 to 12. How we measure the anion gap, or how we calculate the anion gap, I would say not measure, because measure is something different. Sodium minus bicarb and chloride. So it's the anions minus, the cations minus the anions, and the gap should be between 10 and 12 millimole per liter. And normal condition of albumin, if the albumin is low, we should correct the, albumin, the anion gap. So there is, you will hear about correction of anion gap. For each one milligram per deciliter or one gram deciliter per liter drop in albumin, we should add 2.5 milli equivalent to the anion gap. So anion gap corrected to albumin, 2.5 milli equivalent for each one milligram drop per uh, uh, deciliter or one, yes, milligram drop per deciliter. For example, albumin is four, normally it's four. Uh, if the albumin is two, so we have to add five milli equivalent, okay? Understood? So, for example, patient has got an anion gap of 13 or 14 with an albumin of 2 or 20. It depends on the unit that we are using. Okay, 20 and يعني each 10. If we use 20, 30, 40, each 10 is 2.5. If we use 2, 3, 4, each one is 2.5. So, is we add 5 to the 14 equals 19. So, the anion gap is white or 12. 
you add 5, it's 17. So the ion gap, though apparently it's normal, but when we correct it to the album, it's white. Okay? So you have to, 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 to bear in mind when you are calculating an ion gap, the, 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 the albumin. Because in nephropath is like nephrotic, because we lose album in this stuff, they have, they might, you may, might have seven or eight normal anion gap, okay? But when you, when you, when you, when you do it, when you calculate it, this is not normal. Uh, we have also something called urine anion gap. We can use it in normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So anion gap concept, we use it in the acidosis, mainly in the metabolic acidosis, okay? Uh, when the urine ion gap is positive, this means that it's renal causes. So urine ion gap, sodium plus potassium minus chloride. So if this, the result is positive, for example, one, two, three, that means renal. If it's negative, and the negative side means the chloride is more. So uh, this means this is an extra renal thing. Okay, next. Corrected by carb in patient with increased anion gap metabolic acidosis or wide anion gap metabolic acidosis, the other name, we calculate the corrected by carb because as we said, it's calculated in the, in the machine, it's not measured. An increased anion gap metabolic acidosis, there should be more than maybe mole for mole decrease in bicarb as the anion gap increase. So each one, each one increase in the anion gap, there will be decrease in bicarb by one. Okay, a corrected anion gap value higher or lower than normal anion gap, the 24. It's in the case that concomitant presence of metabolic alkalosis or normal or wide anion gap metabolic acidosis respectively. So if it's higher of the corrected anion gap, of the corrected bicarb, if the corrected bicarb is higher than the normal, more than 24, that means we have a concomitant, a con concomitant alkalosis and if it's lower than the normal, that means we have normal anion gap alkalosis, no, acidosis, sorry. And we will we'll give an example about that. Changes in anion gap plus bicarb measure should be equal 24. We'll show you. So anion gap, normally like that. And this is an example how we measure it. Sodium minus the bicarb and the chloride, cations plus anions, minus anions. And this uh, wide anion gap, anything more than 10 to 12, this is a wide anion gap. Next. Uh, why they mention about the random blood sugar, RBS is the random blood sugar, because it's, it, osmotically it does not affect, but how would it affect? Because it causes shifting of the water and causes pseudohyponatremia. Okay? So how we do that? Corrected sodium, for each 100 above, each 100 milligram above 100, we correct the sodium by 1.6. Each elevation, 100 milligram of sugar, we will add 1.6, like that. So in the equation, sodium equals the sodium, uh, open two brackets, random blood sugar minus 100, divided by 100, multiplied by 1.6 millimole. So if the sodium is 135, the normal one, the measured, so the random blood sugar, 500 minus 400, uh, 400 4, multiplied by 1.64, multiplied by 164 x equals 6.6 .6 plus 135 plus the 135 you can you can imagine how what's the number will be it's 7 if you add 7 it will be 140 the sodium the total sodium is 142 but here they put 145 so this is the anion gap before they do the correction next please and after that you have to measure it again okay A metabolic acidosis is uh, classified according to the anion gap. We have wide anion gap or normal anion gap, and we have uh, a normal anion gap, sorry, and wide anion gap increase. The normal anion gap, we can classify them according to renal and extrarenal. If we have extrarenal, like diarrhea, remote loss of flow, diarrhea, fistula, ileal loop, all of these will cause loss of bicarb. Okay, diarrhea will use bicarb with the diarrhea, fistula in the Crohn's, for example, will lose uh, fluid body secretion and bicarb, ileal loop is the same, okay? All of the causes, this causes loss of bicarb. Renal, like renal tubular acidosis, renal tubular acidosis type, type one is the distal, where, where there is a retention of acid, type two is the proximal, where is there a loss of space, where the bicarb is wasted and not reabsorbed. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, so it will impair the, the, the function of the enzyme which convert 
toward bicarb or, so, or uh, H plus. And when you give the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, less bicarb will be produced. And post hypokapnia, post hypokapnia, this means uh, uh, when we have high, when the patient is not breathing and his CO2 is high, eventually it's the bicarb is uh, elevated. Then uh, in the chronic, but in the acute, this will be the will lead to the respiratory acidosis quickly, and uh, the correction of the hypokapnia will lead to metabolic uh, acidosis in the long run. Uh, anion gap, increased anion gap or wide anion gap. We have uh, exogenous and endogenous, and we have something called mid miles aminomic. How to remember that? Minimic, mid miles. Methanol, mid E, uh, yes, methanol, uremia, diabetes, D, methanol, uh, I, uh, mid miles, mid miles, MD, diabetic ketoacidosis, uh, phenoformin or metformin, baraldehyde. Isonazide, lactic acidosis, uh, ethanyl glycol, and salicylate. Okay. So and uremia. You have to remember that. So mid miles, methanol, uremia, diabetic ketoacidosis, B baraldehyde and isonazide as well, uh, lactic acidosis, and uh, ethylenyl glycol and salicylate, toxic alcohol. Next. All these causes wide anion gap metabolic acidosis. Okay. And another minimic as well glycol, ethylene glycol, purple glycol, oxyporylene, L lactate, D lactate, methanol, aspirin, renal failure, uremic ketoacidosis. But I think mid is easier for you and more comprehensive. Next. 5 oxyporylene, this is one of these cause that causes wide metab uh, metabolic acidosis, biroglucamate acid. Chronic uh, amine, a chronic paracetamol use or acetaminophen use can result in elevated anion gap or wide anion gap by accumulating this type of a metab a metabolite called 5 oxyberylene Affected patients are usually, usually women with chronic illnesses and malnutrition. Uh, it should be considered in those with an unexplained anion gap, wide anion gap metabolic disease. Next. And this is the pathway how this that by consuming the glutathione. The glutathione is used uh, glutathione to reduce. It's uh, used in the NADBH cycle. If you remember the cycle, the Krebs cycle and the NDBH cycle, this is a protective in the liver. The glutathione will reduce the NDBH. So it's a reduction, it, causes, it helps in reduction and, pro and it works uh, in protection of the liver and the other organs. Next. And this metabolite will consume and uh, diminish or uh, diminish the the sources of that. Okay, next. The lactic acidosis generated by bacterial fermentation of and not ingested absorbed carbohydrates results from excessive, and this acidosis happens from excessive absorption in the jejunal loop and those with short bowel syndrome who have surgery and the remaining of the when they say short bowel loop syndrome, it means that the remaining of the small intestine or the intestine in general less than two meters, okay, instead of eight meters. Okay. So the standard enzymatic laboratory is lactic is not used, so we do not measure D lactate, but bear in mind for those who have gast uh, gastric bypass surgery, jejunal surgeries, any GI type of surgery that might lead to shorten, and they have this acidosis, bear in mind the D lactic because we do not measure it next. This is the difference, the isometric uh, changes between the L lactate and the D lactate. Next. Causes of uh, normal anion gap, non wide anion gap. Uh, we mentioned that we got the gut and we got the renal. The extra renal is the diarrhea, type 2 proximal, uh, and or the, both of them, type 2 proximal RTA, renal tubular acidosis, post treatment, post -treatment ketoacidosis. The, so the anion gap closed. But when we treat with diabetic ketoacidosis, we give fluid and insulin. So the anion gap will close, but still uh, uh, there is some acidosis uh, within the pH of the blood. So, but the anion gap will close. So that's why we said it's post treatment carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and ureteral divergent ileal loop. As we mentioned, sometimes patients with bladder cancers. They take, they take part of the ileal 
for the ileum and they do like an ileal pouch, an ileal loop. So they like a reconstructive surgery. They put a new bladder from the ileum, basically, okay? So because it's a GI tract, it's not an uh, originally uh, an urethelial or urinary tract thing. So they stood in the ileum, they produce bicarb and the bicarb will be lost within the urine, okay? Decreased renal acid secretion, chronic kidney disease is the same. So, Mushkiltna BCKD can decrease H plus secretion. Type 1 distal RTA retention of acid, and type 4 high aldosteronism that will cause acidosis because aldosterone will lead to secretion of sodium, but, uh, H plus and potassium as well. Uh, urine anion gap is quite important for the metabolic uh, acidosis. If it's positive, زيمحكينة, it's renal. If it's negative, uh, it's extranenal. Uh, it's surrogate, it gives you estimate of ammonium uh, or ammonia and H4 plus excretion in the urine. Positive urine and in gap between 20 and 90 is usually indicative of low or normal uh, ammonium excretion. Thus, patient to metabolic is due to renal. So, the renal function is not in, is impaired for those who, uh, and not excreting the NH4. And that's why, uh, such as in distal RTA, if negative, it's 20 to 50 minus 20 to 50, you'll see minuses, which means that it's remote, the increased excretion, and this is a remote loss of the bicarbonate chloride from diarrhea, for example. Okay. Yes, next. So, positive renal, negative extra renal. Uh, we find it type 1, type 2, type 4. Urinary BH is important, quite important. It's more than six renal tubular acidosis. Often, any so usually it's between uh, the normal, it's between uh, six and eight, okay, six and seven, seven point five the urine pH. But anything between four and four point five and eight urine pH is normal, should not be concerning, should not be concerning. More than six, just if you come back to the slide, more than six means it's more alkaline. So, renal tubular acidosis. Uh, type 1, which is the distal, we said it's more retention of acid, so the urine will be more alkanetic because no secretion H plus that much. And, uh, and if the urine is less than 5.5 and there is a hypokalemia, you think about the, the proximal one, which is the type 2 where we lost uh, bicarb. Uh, and, uh, and, in type, in type, and in type 4, where, where the, the, there is a pseudo hypoaldosteronism and metabolic acidosis will be uh, type 4, there will be hyperkalemia. Okay, that's the sites where the renal tubular acidosis, we, as we said, type 2 is affecting the proximal convoluted tubule and type 1, the distal convoluted tubule. Type 4, it's affecting the distal and the collecting, and the collecting duct where there is a pseudo hypoaldosteronism where the aldosterone acts. Next. This is one of these example cases. 56 female vomiting there three days despite intake of lubramide. Lubramide uh, is an uh, opioid agonist that acts on mu receptors, I think, that will help and uh, we use them as an anti dairy agent. Uh, has last year not, but was. 12 uh, hours ago, blood pressure is high, she's hypotense, and heart rate 120, respiratory rate 28. Or next, skin tergor. Uh, her sodium is 130, potassium 2.5, chloride 105, blood urine antigen 42, creatinine 2, random blood sugar, and you got the numbers. Uh, blood urea creatinine 21, that's mean pre-renal combination. Yes, next. Next. BH is low, acidotic, and the bicarb is low, so it's metabolic acidosis, so we need to know. Yes, next. Is it compensated? Expected BCO2 will be 28 20 to 32, so it's a simple metabolic acidosis, so this is a compensated one. Next. Anion gap is 10, so normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, so it's come, it goes with the history of the diarrhea. Okay, next. Case two, 30-year-old male, epilepsy, grand mal seizure, comes with, severe, with acidosis, bicarb is 17, so metabolic acidosis next. We'll see if it's expected CO2, 35, 37, so it's combined, so the CO2 is high, so it's combined metabolic and respiratory, you can see, as you can see. Next, then we measure the anion gap is 25, it's wide anion gap. Okay, next. 
So it's why then you got plus respiratory acidosis. And in this condition, we have to measure the bicarb corrected. So the HCO3 is 17 plus the changes in the anion gap. So the anion gap normal is 12, and he got he got uh, 25. So the difference is 13. 13 plus 17 is 30, more than 25. So we have wide anion gap, respiratory uh, respiratory acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. Understood? So. Even the bicarb should be lower than 17 in his case, but the, that's why we mentioned initially we think we thought that it's metabolic acidosis. But when we measured the corrected bicarb, the corrected bicarb is more than we expect. It's more than 30, more than the 24. That, so that means he had excess bicarb. He should have less than 17. He should have probably 12 or 10. Okay. And that's not very confusing, but it's easy. Yani, تغير من metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis. Why the anion gap? Because it's due to the correction of the bicarb, جماعة. Okay. Next. Nineteen. Just sorry. If you go back. Nineteen. Nineteen-year-old female fashion model surprised to find her potassium two point seven because she was normal calamic six months ago. Begin to diet of fruit and vegetable, denies any vomiting and the use of diuretics and laxatives. If any, yani, to make sure that she does not have body dysmorphic image uh, disorder, uh, anorexia nervosa, or what like that, something like that. She is asymptomatic, uh, 90 over 55, with subtle changes of volume contraction. Next. Uh, yeah, BH 7.45, it's alkalotic. Tamam. It's just bear with me if you come back. Sorry. Yes, metabolic alkalosis and uh, and the CO2 is 45 by carb 30. Let's go toward the calculations next. Expected BCO2 and I can have metabolic alkalosis six. The difference and uh, 0.75. So we expect it's 45.5 and the CO2 is the same. So it's compensated, simple compensated metabolic alkalosis. Next. Anion gap, normal anion gap. Lamana, we do not measure it in metabolic alkalosis, but they measure it. What's the cause of acid base disorder? What do you think? Metabolic alkalosis compensated in this lady. That's it. Just stop in that, yes. Diuretic intake and separate vomiting. Diuretic. Furosemide, what does furosemide do, do? Where does it act? Furosemide act in the thick ascending loop. And the chloride sodium trans co-transporter, it suppresses that. So which prevents, which means more sodium chloride will be excreted. And eventually when this will go to the distal convoluted, the filtrate will go to the distal convoluted, and the collecting tubule, the aldosterone there is there. Shura hamil aldosterone, it will reabsorb the sodium, تمام? and get rid of the potassium. So you see in the hypokalemia. So already the frosamide prevent sodium chloride. And because of this water shift and osmosis, the, the potassium will be prevented from reabsorbed as well through the effect of the aldosterone. And the aldosterone will get rid of the H plus. Okay, uh, sorry, the aldosterone will retain the, uh, yes, will get rid of the H plus. We'll get rid of the blood sugar plus, so we will have metabolic alkalosis. So either she is taking diuretics, mushakitina, she was not talking, or she is vomiting. Separatious vomiting. Okay? Separatious vomiting. What does that mean? What, what happens with vomiting? When you vomit, you lose what? Which fluid? Hmm? Which fluid? When you vomit? You lose chloride and H plus H chloride HCl. So, vomiting will induce alkalosis. Okay. Understood. Barter syndrome. We have gentleman and barter. We'll talk about that in a sec. But barter syndrome, uh, it's the thiazide like, and uh, uh, and we have the gentleman. This one is affecting the gentleman. Uh, yes, barter is uh, the thiazide like, not furosemide like. Okay, I will tell you about that next, in the next second, the next slide. 
Next. How she should manage her best balance lines. Correct hypokalemia, hydrate her with nine muscle line. Administer acidifying agent or give carbonic anhydrase. Simple. Give fluid, okay? Okay, so if they, in the metabolic alkalosis, sometimes you measure the urinary chloride, okay? The urinary chloride, it will help us. If the urinary chloride, spot urinary chloride, less than 20 milli equivalent per liter, that's a vomiting nasogastric suction, vomiting, we're losing chloride. So the, there is, the kidney is trying to retain the chloride, the remaining chloride. Uh, remote diuretics, okay, they have diuretics. They took cystic fibrosis because of the sweat chloride test. We're losing chloride in, our, in the patient with cystic fibrosis. They lose more chloride. Most chronic hypercapnia <coughs> and congenital chlorhydria, uh, chlorhydra. And uh, uh, I do not do this entity, to be honest. It's a rare, very rare entity. Uh, and those with high blood pressure, and those with high blood pressure and the urinary chloride more than 20, either excess mineral corticoid, excess adrenal, <coughs> adrenal tumors that secreting more uh, cortisol and aldosterone, okay, uh, which called, or syndrome called Kohn's syndrome, from cosmetophia, I think you have heard about Kohn's syndrome, which is hyperandestinism, yes. Excess glucocorticoids, uh, those who are taking hydrocortisone or fluidrocortisone, the fluidro is a potent mineral corticoid, exogenous synthetic mineral corticoid tablets, sometimes we give it in, uh, they give it in adrenal insufficiency, and they can give it an uh, orthostatic hypotension of unknown cause. It helps as well. And Liddell syndrome, Liddell syndrome, when uh, we have uh, the Liddells is the hyperaldosteronism, when the receptors, they are acting as if there is a aldosterone there, despite there is no aldosterone, okay? So this is the Liddell syndrome, so uh, abnormal mutation in the, in, the, in, the, in the receptors that could cause activation as if there is aldosterone there but there is no aldosterone occupying these receptors okay excessive low blood pressure is barter syndrome and gentleman barter is a thiazide like gentleman is a diuretic is a, uh, is a th furosemide like it depends barter is a defect in the, the distal convoluted tubule as if you are giving thiazide chlorhydrothiazide so patient will have hyper uh, uricemia and uh, 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 and, uh, and, hypo, and hypokalemia and hyponatremia as well. They will be hypotensive. Both of them, they, are, they act like diuretics. Gentleman is another, uh, 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 is a, a loop-like uh, loop -like diuretics effect. It's the same transporter that's affected, the sodium chloride effect that's affected uh, by a mutation or some a mutation congenitally, as if the patient will act as if he is taking furosemide Diuretics. So memorize that. Gentleman is loop like diuretics illness. They will have uh, hypokalemia and all of this stuff. Okay. And uh, uh, barter, it will be thiazide like, and they will have hypokalemia. In addition to that, they will have hypouricemia. Okay. And both of them, they will, uh, they will cause uh, uh, metabolic uh, alkalosis. Okay. Uh, normal blood pressure, hypokalemia, and recent diuretics. Next. This is the Liddell syndrome, where we're talking about the intercalated cells and the principal cells within the tubules. Uh, the, we have the co-transporter. Sodium is excreted, potassium is reabsorbed, and at the basement membrane, uh, potassium is excreted, and sodium is reabsorbed again. Uh, this is the normal. In the Liddell, we have a defect where we, uh, the potassium and the H plus, they are excreted and uh, there is a problem in the reabsorption. Next. Liddell is an autosomal dominant disorder caused by gain of function of mutation in the ENAC uh, epithelial sodium uh, channels, causing enhanced sodium reabsorption independent of uh, mineralocorticoid uh, activation. That's why we're talking about that. Renal and aldosterone levels, they are suppressed because the feedback loop, there is a lot of sodium reabsorbed, so they will, they will suppress the renal and the steroid. Characterized by hypertension at young age, hypokalemia, and metabolic alkalosis because they get rid as if they have an excessive aldosterone, but they do not have that. There is no response to MR blockers, the, uh, the mineral corticoid blockers, such as pyranolactone or iliparilinone. 
or which is called aldosterone antagonist, the other name of them, trimeterine and amyloride block ENAC and correct the problem because the amyloide tryptin, they act on the ENAC rather than the spironolactone that they act in the aldosterone receptor itself. So the problem is not the aldosterone, to be honest itself, it's the ENAC channels, okay, with the reabsorbed sodium more. Barter versus gentleman, that's Barter syndrome, as we mentioned, it mimics, sorry. So Barter, Barter, it's a, th- a lube-like diuretic. It's like furosemide. It acts on the thick ascending lube. This is the co-transporter that we will talk about. That's responsible for reabsorption of sodium, chloride, and potassium. So this will remain within the filtrate. So we'll have hyponatremia, hypokalemia, hypochloremia, metabolic alkalosis. Gittleman is the thiazide, so I'm sorry, I apologize, so probably I mixed them. Uh, uh, the sodium and the chloride, it's a, a channel receptor within the distal convoluted tubule. So again, barter is uh, loop diuretics like, frosamide like, and thiazide, oh, gittleman is thiazide like loop diuretics. Just memorize them like that. Okay, with the extra thing that the thiazide and the gittleman causes hyperuricemia. Okay, next. Impaired sodium, barter versus gentlemen, impaired sodium chloride reabsorption due to volume depletion, activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system, blood pressure is low or no normal, trying to improve the blood pressure, combination of secondary hyperaldosteronism and increased distal flow and sodium delivery enhances potassium and hydrogen excretion by the effect of the aldosterone, Zayma Hakana. So you will get rid of H plus and potassium and the patient will be hypokalemic and alkalotic. Okay. Uh, urinary calcium excretion is normal or high with barter syndrome. So they have hypercalciuria and frosamide like. So that's why in uh, malignant hypercalcemia, those with uh, uh, malignancies and, uh, for example, breast CA, for example, breast CA with metastasis to the bone or something like that in the patient, they have hypercalcemia. We give fluid, 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 and we give diuretics as well because they cause hypercalciuria. They get rid of the excess calcium. Uh, by contrast, uranic calcium excretion is typically reduced in patients with gentlemen. That's what's happened in thiazide diuretics. So thiazide diuretics causes hypercalcemia على العكس. Loop frosamide causes hypercalciuria. So loop frosamide get rid of calcium, thiazide retain calcium. Okay? Hypomagnesemia and magnesium wasting, both disorders more prominent in gentlemen. Al distal convoluted, then if it's distal convoluted, we see reabsorption in magnesium can. Next. Case four, 73 year old male, COBD, standing, uh, stable, core pulmonary peripheral edema, has been taking frosamide for six months, five days ago, anoxymylase, productive coffee, continued his medication until he developed nausea, found disoriented and stimulant. Next, respiratory distress, prolonged expiratory phase, wheezes, and he was in the COBD exacerbation patient. Next. This is his sodium at admission and 24 hour endoacidosis, BH 7.33 and BO2 43 bicarbs 40. Respiratory acidosis next. Is it compensated, expected? Let's just come back in this much way. 39.2 and the CO2 and the bicarbs 40, so it's simple respiratory, yep. Next. Acute respiratory causes, acidosis, CNS depression, sedatives, benzodiazepines, CVAs, and head traumas, anything that affects the respiratory rate. Neuromuscular, myasthenia, gulimbere, muscular dystrophy, hypokalemia, all of them, they cause uh, hypoventilation and CO2 buildup. Uh, impaired, next, so, sorry, impaired, impaired pulmonary fusion, pneumothorax, and this stuff. Uh, chronic causes, and uh, you have central uh, nervous system depression, sedative dose, overdose, methadone, uh, primarily alveolar hypoventilation, obesity hypoventilation syndrome, brain tumors, and pulmonary uh, bilomyelitis, the, which affect the uh, phrenic nerve and the nerves that uh, supplies the diaphragm and responsible for the um, uh, breathing. A neuromuscular impairment, as we know, bilomyelitis, muscular dystrophy, ALS, diaphragmatic paralysis and all of this stuff, ventilatory restriction, cavus scoliosis, spinal arthritis, uh, obesity as well, that will cause uh, fibrothorax, hydrothorax, anything pleural effusion that restrict the lungs from expansion will cause that. Abnormal airways, uh, airway obstructions, 
and uh, lower airway obstruction, COBD, and uh, bron fixed obstruction, bronchitis, emphysema, bron bronchitis, and pulmonary alveoli like uh, interstitial fibrosis and severe chronic pneumonitis. All of these might int uh, interfere with the uh, ventilation. Next. Case five, 42 year old male alcoholic come to ER intoxicated, found in the bark or the bowl of vomitus. Showed unkempt and incoherent patient, markedly contracted ECF, in temperature 39, crackles in the right upper lobe. Next. Sodium, and this is the BH, is alkalotic, and what's the cause of the alkalosis? Blood urine is in its pre renal. Uh, what's the cause of the alkalosis here? Next. You see respiratory alkalosis. Next, acute respiratory alkalosis will decrease 2 millimole. So 14 minus 25 multiplied by 2, 3 is 22, 21, which is compensated. Next, anion gap. Anion gap here, 130 minus, it's, the, it's wide anion gap. So we have wide anion gap metabolic acidosis plus respiratory alkalosis. So it's not just a compensated. Next. So what do you think from this? So what do you think from this? Wide onion gap, breast respiratory alkalosis. Wide onion gap. What cause from this? What causes wide onion gap? Alcoholic. Ketoacidosis, and what will cause the respiratory alkalosis? Aspiration pneumonia. So he will be tachypneic, breathing, clearing, washing out CO2. And he got this alcohol, which is intoxicated, so he got the wide onion gap. So one and two. Next. Okay. A respiratory alkalosis condition that stimulates the respiratory syndrome, oxygen deficiency at high altitude, congestive heart failure, hypoxia, anxiety, pain, fever, whatever, cirrhosis, gram negative sepsis, ventilator induced iatrogenic. Next. Any questions? Next. Any questions? So it's quite important sometimes that you might see that it's simple compensated, but when you measure the anion gap, it will be high. So not to miss. And again, not to forget the corrected uh, sodium, the corrected bicarb when we see such cases. Okay. Next, and then put on the TV.